Hi there, I'm Anton from Anton's Mindstorms Hacks. In this video we're going to have a look at the difference between Spike Prime and the new LEGO Mindstorms Robot Inventor kit. This kit has recently appeared and it is very similar to the Spike Prime. You can see they have very similar hubs here. So people wonder what to buy and what the differences are. Let's have a look at the differences in this video so you can make your own decision. First, I think we should start with the concept of both kits. Um, Spike Prime has been on the market um, for a bit longer than LEGO Mindstorms, which has obviously uh, just launched when I'm making this video. And this one is specifically aimed at educators. Um, it is a simple kit with short activities. It's got this practical box, as you can see. Um, it's uh, got a solid plastic lid. You can stack them, so you can uh, buy a whole lot of them, stack them and use them in your class. Um, it's got this very nice card in here. Um, so you can count all the parts after you finish play and you can be sure that everything is back in the box and it includes these nice uh, sorting trays. The box is, very, is really very practical because when you, um, oops, <laughs> when you close it, you can just flip it around, shake it, um, whatever, and papa, everything is still sorted inside, which is kind of cool because kids do that. Now, the, um, Lego Mindstorm set, the Lego Mindstorm set is a different set. Um, let's open it here. For a Lego kit, it's got a relatively practical box because the lid opens, uh, there is a nice overview in there, you can store your partly built robots. If you compare that to your average uh, Technics uh, box, this kind of boxes, they uh, open from the side. Yeah, this one is reclosable, but it's not like you have an overview of the parts or it's easy to store your stuff in there. Usually these end up in the cardboard bin. This is not an educator's tool. It's something you use at home to play with and build your own robots. While it doesn't have the nice sorting trays of the Spike Prime, it does feature a, a bigger, bigger, way bigger selection of plastic. There are 920 parts in here, I guess maybe even more, um, close to 1000 parts at least, while this one has about 500 parts in, inside. Um, again, this is okay if you're building small robots that um, for a classroom activity and you should be able to build and program the robot within an hour. These robots uh, take rather more time to build, they have more steps and there are more programming activities. So this is something that you could play with for days at home with your family or your friends. Now let's zoom in on the hubs. As I told you in the introduction, they are very similar. They are exactly the same shape actually on the outside and they're also the same shape on the inside. Um, at least <laughs> the same electronics boards because um, they ship with different firmwares but you can flash this firmware on that hub and you can flash that firmware on this hub so no difference here. Um, why would you flash either firmware on either hub? Well, the um, LEGO Mindstorms uh, firmware and programming uh, software features remote control so you can remote control it with a phone or with a PS4 gamepad as you can see in my unboxing video there is a link to the unboxing video of this one um, in the uh, card up there um, and Spike Prime doesn't do that otherwise the software is pretty much the same Spike Prime has got activities with simpler building instructions. These are more complex building instructions, but both have Scratch and Python programming. And the programming blocks and the programming code is almost identical. I haven't found any difference in here. If, you take, if we take a closer look here at the, um, at the uh, electronics, there is something else that um, stands out. Robot Inventor has four of these motors. And I think they are really nice motors. 
um, they have pinholes on many more sides and they are like easier to build with than the old EV3 motors so I'm really happy that this set has four of them um, Spike Prime has only three motors let's have a look in here So you have these two and there is a large one. The large motor, I don't know, I've never missed it while building with LEGO Mindstorms. Um, it has a bit more torque and it has a bit more pinholes on the front. So that should make it a little easier to build with in theory. Um, however, I always liked I think size is also really important for motors. So the smaller your motors are, the easier they are to build with. So Spike Prime features like one less motor, uh, but it has the large motor. Um, for building general robots, I think it's rather better to have more motors uh, than less. And maybe you can give a class about torque and then compare both motors then there are the sensors pretty similar um, ultrasonic and light sensor in spike prime ultrasonic and where is the light sensor and light sensor in lego mindstorms Now, the sensor pack is slightly different here in Spike Prime because Spike Prime features this force sensor. It's like a touch sensor, but it can sense force. So the, the deeper you press it, the harder you have to press it. And therefore there is a little spring inside and therefore it can sense force, which is a bit different than the EV3 touch sensor, which was more of an on and off switch. Um, I think again this is an educator's tool it's nice to learn about force build a scale or something but for building funny robots I've never had use for a force sensor in the EV3 I used to touch sensor a lot to calibrate motors but these motors have um, uh, an absolute positioning system so there is a little mark on there that um, shows where their zero point is and the motors are able to retrieve that zero point uh, always so there is a bit less use for uh, this button you could use it as an input button to control your robot but then again these hubs have an accelerometer inside and it recognizes taps in every direction i, I believe even double taps so um, there is less use for this touch sensor I don't really miss it. If you look at the other plastic parts, I think Spike Prime has got one big advantage in that it has this 28 tooth gear, which is a really nice gear. It's um, in the series of these angled gear that you can use both straight and angled. Um, it's a very nice addition in the chain. If you click the pop out banner there, you, I made a full video of all the meshing possibilities in the Spike Prime uh, gear set and this one really added a lot of flexibility there so that's the 28 tooth gear is one that i really will be missing in the new mindstorm set the mindstorm set on the other hand has got uh, some other nifty gears um, it's got these uh, new uh, technic uh, differential gear which also has a 28 tooth uh, ring here on the outside and Lego Mindstorms also has these turntables, which are really nice for building robots. You can build walkers with them and um, 8080s, all kind of uh, nifty uh, lever, lever mechanisms. And again, these turntables, they make sense on larger robots, but they don't make so much sense in classroom activities. If you look at the wheels, um, Spike Prime has got almost the same wheels as uh, Lego Mindstorm's Robot Inventor. Uh, these, uh, the, the insides are black, however the outside rubber here is uh, blue, light blue. 
and here the outside rubber is black too and I think this light blue becomes dirty rather quickly so on my robots I prefer to have black ones so I won't have to clean the wheels all the time. Both sets have this Technic base plate uh, it's also a new part but Spike Prime features two of them um, I think one is enough but if you want to I think you can buy more on Bricklink or um, um, yeah just buy extra sets if you look at the frames the frame selection is also the same um, so Spike Prime has got all the newer larger frames much like uh, Robot Inventor and in Robot Inventor they are nice and black and they are much easier to combine with your other LEGO. So this is nice as an indicator's tool where you can quickly see if a robot is built well. If you want to combine um, your Mindstorms LEGO with other Technic sets, maybe like this one or that one. Um, I find it easier if the parts are black or gray and have a bit more of a subdued palette um, for instance here i combined the forest harvesting machine with a lego mindstorms ev3 to build this mech suit and the combination went together rather well if you uh, if you like this mech suit you can click uh, the link in the pop-out banner there there is a full building instructions and programming for uh, this mech suit what's also interesting about spike prime is that it has more studded parts so classic lego with studs i think it makes a lot of sense um, in an education tool when I work with kids and um, have them build robots, it's always nice to have the give them a, an assignment, uh, build, let them build a small robot, program it, and there's always teams that finish early. So um, I like to give those teams the extra challenge of pimping their robots so they can decorate the robot with um, all these studded parts and make it way more fun um, there is nothing or there are some studded parts in there but very very few so there are the, the big discs um, and I think there I saw antennas but um, it's much less about decorating here it's much more about building solid uh, Lego robots um, I prefer this style of robots, the style of robots that you can drop or run into a wall without any parts uh, snapping off. There is one last part I want to have a look at and it's the uh, caster wheel. Spike Prime has got these uh, cup and ball caster wheels, at least it has only one. Unless you buy the expansion pack then you get a second one. Um, so this uh, caster wheel is very nice and it's got low friction. Let's show you how you use it. Usually you have a robot with two motors. Uh, you add a caster wheel here on the back and then you can drive everywhere. However, if you have only one wheel, the robot tends to flip over here on the side where there is no wheel. If you want to build more solid robots, it's better to have them um, stand on the ground on four points. So let's show that here. So there is not only the two motors, but there are also two other points of contact with the ground. And these um, black uh, hard plastic wheels are very nice to use as caster wheels because they have no friction sideways and even less friction forward. So they are, they are I think, the perfect replacement for the Spike Prime caster wheel. And I don't think um, I will ever miss it. Um, and what's what's also uh, a thing about this one? It's I think it's rather hard to build with because it's sticking out so far. Um, and these are easier to build with. You can just stick in one of these frictionless pins here and there and uh, you're rolling 
Okay, those are the big differences here between Spike Prime and the new LEGO Mindstorms robot inventor. So to sum it all up, I think this is really an educator's tool. If you're an educator and you work uh, with kids very often, um, this is the um, set to get. It's simple, it's quick, it, you can sort it. Um, it's got this very rugged and uh, usable box. If you're just building robots at home, this uh, LEGO Mindstorms, new LEGO Mindstorms robot inventor is the kit for you because it's got uh, more um, because it's got bigger robots more plastic more motors it's just more value for money okay i hope this uh, video has helped you make uh, a buying decision uh, maybe you already have uh, spike prime and you're considering whether to add a robot inventor to it or maybe you have none of them and you are doubting uh, which one to buy it all comes down on whether you want to play with it yourself or whether you want to use it as an educator i hope you enjoyed my video please uh, subscribe and you might be interested in my other tutorial videos i have some spike prime tutorial videos um, some new lego mindstorms tutorial videos will be coming up another reason to subscribe and i have a lot of lego mindstorms ev3 uh, videos See you later. Bye bye.